From the What Will They Think Of Next files, hope for humans mourning the loss of long-loved pets. Well, pet dogs, to be precise. With just a single cell, a laboratory in South Korea is now creating replicas of devoted owners' departed pooches. It's not quite Jurassic Park, more like Jurassic Bark. But even still, the science of cloning animals is an incredible glimpse into an exciting or creepy world. There's always a but, though, and in this case, it's a big one. Would you hand over $135,000 so that you'd never have to say goodbye to your favourite pet? You ready to go? <laughs> Mabel and Myrtle are a couple of very costly Cocker Spaniels for their owner, British author Tom Rubython. Their creation was complicated, some might say crazy. Coming home. Yes. When Daisy, Tom's beloved canine companion, died in 2014, instead of letting go, he decided to have her cloned. Tom, how would you describe the connection you had with Daisy? Um. It's, it's hard. To, it's hard to describe because it, you're all coming back. You know, I've noticed with other dog lovers, you some people love their dogs. You have to love your dog to have a dog, but there's certain dogs that you have that that just they have to be special dogs, and they're a bit more intelligent than the average dog, and and it's just something. And so Tom turned to a lab in Korea that cloned Daisy's DNA and created Mabel and Myrtle. How much did it cost you? Well, it started off, it was going to be about £66,000. But the currency, we had Brexit, and the currency went crazy, so it ended up being about seventy-five. Ouch, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. So after your dog passes away, you can go through the traditional burial, or you can go through cremation, or you can go through see a taxidermist and get your dog stuffed. The other new alternative that we provide is cloning. Daisy was cloned deep in the industrial heartland of Seoul at a purpose-built laboratory called Suarm Biotech, where replica dogs are being churned out by the kennel load. Jay, this room really is a scientific success story, isn't it, when you look at what you've got here? Well, it's a successful story of science becoming commercialised. Sure. JWW, so as he likes to be called, is one of yeah. Suarm's scientists and sometimes eccentric spokesman for the world's biggest and most profitable dog cloning operation. These ones are headed to China, Hong Kong. Who are your clients? Who owns them? Some of them are these mega rich people, but also some of them are just normal people uh, who sometimes even go through the liquidation of their asset to actually afford the cloning services. Is that right? Yes. Right. So they would sell up their house to clone a dog. Yes, but usually they usually have more than one house. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was very tight doing it. I had to sell my cars and make quite a lot of sacrifices to do it. We, we do crazy things, don't we, with our money, which are inexplicable. Tom's wife, Beverly loves animals as much as he does, but he knew she thought the idea of cloning was somewhat nuts, which is why he decided to keep her in the dark about his plans for their departed Daisy. I didn't tell Beverly I was doing this, you see, because <laughs> I knew she wouldn't she'd think I was crazy. So I thought, no, <laughs> best not to tell her. <laughs> But explaining why he wanted their dead pet refrigerated instead of buried was a little tricky, even for an author. So I made up some story about um, the insurers, because they were insured. I got some ice, I got a tea chest, a big old fashioned tea chest, and I put Daisy in the ice. You've got to put them, keep them cool. If his secret was hard to keep, it was even harder taking the necessary flesh samples from his dead dog. I remember going into the office once and just looking at all this medical equipment on the desk and I thought, and I kept saying to him, you're up to something. And he said, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> How did you react when you found out? I said he's been robbed and they didn't have to wear a mask or hold a gun to his head. 
He's been robbed and they didn't have to hold a gun to his head. This is where Sue Arm's commercial cloning production line begins, creating a cloned embryo under the microscope. An egg harvested from a surrogate dog has its nucleus removed. And in fact, we created a blank egg. Yes, like just a vessel. Yes. OK. In its place is inserted the DNA from the dog to be cloned, usually taken from a skin or muscle cell. It's extraordinary. And from this, little puppies grow. Yeah. <laughs> in Sue Arm's busy operating theatre downstairs, a surrogate mother is about to be implanted with the cloned embryos just created in the lab. What you see on the monitor are 10 embryos. Yep. Now he's going to bring in the catheter and draw up the embryos into the catheter. Mm -hmm. The next step is what many critics of cloning find repugnant. To maximise the chance of a live birth, multiple embryos, sometimes up to 30, are implanted in multiple surrogates. How many of these are done a day here? Usually maybe up to three to four. It's a lot of effort and a lot of science to deliver the dream to a grieving owner, a single genetic replica of a much-loved pet. I don't know whether they're told how many dogs don't make it to birth. Um, I don't know whether they're told, well, you know, it takes so many sorry, we've got mother dogs to, to, to carry so many pups before you get your one to at the end. I would hope that if they're really dog lovers, if they really got all that information and they thought about it, they would then decide, no, I'm not going to do this. World leading stem cell biologist and geneticist Robin Lovell Badge sees cloning as not only cruel, but ultimately pointless. While clones are genetic replicas, their markings are often different to the original, as are their temperaments. It's a waste of money. You're not going to reproduce the dog that you lost that was your favourite pet. It just is not going to happen. They'd be much better off going to the local dog pound, choosing a, a poor little dog that's been maybe not looked after terribly well, giving it a happy home. I don't know what the right answer is. Really? No, I don't. I don't. Um, I don't defend what what I did because you're absolutely right. I could have gone to the dog pound and got astray, and that would have been the right thing to do, probably. But as human beings, we don't always do the right thing, do we? If we're honest. But sitting here today, do you feel like you did the wrong thing? Did that you did something ethically wrong? No. Oh no, not at all. No, no. Oh, I did what technology allows, doesn't it? Back in Korea, this surreal genetic production line grinds on. And another clone puppy comes to life. Depending on your viewpoint, this little newborn is either a scientific marvel or a mistake. How many dogs have you cloned? This I need a fact check. <laughs> <laughs> Sue Arm, it seems, is a stickler for numbers. I have to give you that number because somebody gets very upset if I don't give you that number. <laughs> yeah, I guess they are. 1,117. Wow. Represents People quite a lot of cash. People spent a lot of, of money, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is what it's all about. A puppy that costs a cool $135,000 to make. Perhaps priceless in the cuteness stakes, but when you put all your love, hope and dollars into cloning your beloved original dog, sometimes you get more than you bargain for. In this case, four times. This little fella has three identical brothers and now his owner has to make the hard decision of what to do with these carbon copies. I think, oh God, 70 grand. <laughs> then the next day we've got another four carvers two, and I think, oh my God. Two puppies, 140,000 pounds. Hey, we were happy, but he was getting really worried. I was going to ring and say, oh, it's three, four, and five, and all this. Like, we were thinking, right, which family members can we give the others to if there ends up being 10? Coming up, from dogs to dinosaurs. 
So which creature would you like to bring back? Well, the one that's the biggest and most popular would, of course, be the mammoth. And maybe even humans. You're cloned. What? Just because we can do it, should we do it? That's next on 60 Minutes. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.